Relations and functions can be expressed as lists of ordered pairs. The first coordinate is going to be the input coordinate and the second coordinate will be the output. Now if we take a look at this first list here, we've got 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 3. That is a relation but not a function. One of the reasons that we can tell it's not a function is if we sketch it in this um, diagram where we put the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right. Now the inputs are going to be the first coordinates. So there's only one um, first coordinate, it's a 1. The outputs though could be 2 or 3 and that's how we'll create these diagrams. Then whenever a coordinate pair is listed together with an input and an output, we can draw that in the diagram with an arrow showing that 1 leads to 2 in that first pair and 1 leads to 3 in the other pair. So we should draw that arrow too. This is a relation because the 1 has a relationship to 2 and 1 also has a relationship to 3. However, it's not considered a function. And the reason why is because a function is a set of ordered pairs in which no two ordered pairs have the same first coordinate or input. In a function, every input leads to one and only one output. So that's the problem here, is that the one leads to both two and three. That's what the coordinate pairs tell us, and that's what this diagram tells us as well. And so that makes it not a function. But if we check out this next one here, one leads to two and three leads to four. Now that is a function. If I was to draw it, I'll need a 1 and a 3 as my inputs. Those are the first coordinates. And then the second coordinates are 2 and 4, so we'll need those over here on the right. Now, 1 maps to 2. In other words, 1 leads to 2. And 3 leads to 4. So this is a function because we don't have any input leading to more than one output. Each input leads to one and only one output. So take a look at these sets of ordered pairs. There's three different sets. And decide which of them represents a function. I'll do the first one because it asks us to find the domain and range first of all. Now the domain is simply going to be a listing of the first coordinates. These are the inputs. We can put the domain in braces and we'll make a list. So 1 is a first coordinate, so let's use that in the domain. Here's a 2, which is a first coordinate of that pair, so let's include that. There's a 3 and a 4. Those are the inputs of the function, and that's what the domain represents. Here it asks us for the range. The range is going to be the outputs. We'll make a list in braces here and then check out the second coordinates. So 2, 4, 6, and 8. Now we want to be able to draw the domain and range in one of these box diagrams. The inputs will go on the left. That's also the domain, outputs are the range, put that on the right, and let's just list them all, one, two, three, four, now let's do two, four, six, and eight, and then we'll map each uh, coordinate to the one that it's related to. So one is related to two. 
2 is related to 4. 3 leads to 6, and 4 leads to 8. Okay. Is it a function? Yes, it is. Not only that, but it's a one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, every input leads to one and only one output, and every output is pointed to by only one input. Try the next two for yourself, and then I'll give my answers. All right, here for the domain, we see the numbers negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 are going to be part of the domain. But when it comes to the range, there's only one y value here, uh, and that's 0. Let's draw the diagram. negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Over here we just have a 0. We don't have to repeat. Uh, you can just draw it once. Okay, negative 1 leads to 0. 0 leads to 0. 1 leads to 0, and 2 leads to 0. They all lead to 0. Is that a function? It turns out that it is. It's okay for more than one input to lead to the same output. Um, all right, for this last one, we have a domain of 1, 4, and 7. Notice that there are two 4's here, but we actually don't have to repeat in a set. Uh, this is sufficient. And then when it comes to the outputs, I see there's a 2, a 5, and a 8, and a 6. Let's draw the diagram. Now we don't want to repeat the fours here because that wouldn't reveal to us if an input value was pointed to more than one output. We want to be able to see that. And okay, one points to two, according to this pair. Four will point to five. Seven points to eight and 4 points to 6. Is it a function? It is not a function. There's a problem. The problem is that one of the inputs points to more than one output. That's not allowed. And it may help to just think back to that picture of a function being a machine to see why some of these work as machines and the others don't. In each case, what could be a rule that is being followed here? What does the machine do to the inputs? Well, over here, we threw in a 1, we got out 2. We threw in a 2, we got out 4. What's it doing to the inputs? It's doubling them, right? So if I was to write that in function notation, I'd write f of x equals 2 times x. So you throw in an input x, whatever it is, 
the machine doubles it. Throw in a one, out comes a two. Throw in a three, out comes six. What rule is this function machine following? Well, as far as I can tell, it looks like it's just making the output zero no matter what you throw into it. So if you throw in a negative one into the machine, zero comes out. If you throw in a zero, into the machine, zero comes out. Doesn't matter what you throw in, zero comes out. That's still a rule. But why is this one a problem? It's not a good machine. If you throw in a one, two comes out. No problem there. If you throw in a seven, Eight comes out. No problem there. But if you put in a four, what comes out? You don't know. You might get a five or you might get a six. And that's the problem. It doesn't have a rule that it follows. So it's not a function. All right, with that understanding, um, Take a look at these diagrams down below and try to decide which ones are functions and which ones are not functions. All right, so our first one here is a function. One leads to four. 2 leads to 5, and 3 leads to 6, that is a function. Here, uh, 1 leads to 5, 2 leads to 5, and 3 leads to 6. More than one input leads to the same output, but that's actually okay. It's still a function. But the last one, we see that 1 leads to 4, and 1 leads to 5, and that's the problem. So this one can be called a relation. which is just a set of ordered pairs, but it is not a function. This one over here is both a relation and a function. The idea being that relations and functions have this relationship all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions.